You know, you learn things in a family, right? It, it's, it's a part of what it is. I, I, our kids teach us things, too. And, man, I, I had some kids who were interested in bugs and, you know, hornets and spiders. And I, I saw more bugs when my kids were little than I had any desire to ever see. I remember one time, Michael, when he was really little, he had a bucket of worms. And Laura says, go throw those things out. And he says, I can't, Mom. My ants won't have anything to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know. You know, we learn things, right, in family. But seriously, the spiritual lessons that you instill in your children, that you share with your friends, that your co-workers see in your life and hear from your mouth, those spiritual lessons, the patterns that you establish, I mean, they are either going to be to the benefit or to the harm of those who are in your family. There is not a middle road. I mean, think about it. In the family, children learn to pray or not. In the family, children learn to serve or not. In the family, children learn to give or not. In the family, children learn to place God and God's will ahead of every other thing or not, right? The family is school for life. And there are a number of different areas where it's so important what we learn from family. The first area is in relationships. You know, right or wrong, good or bad, the ways that you relate to other people are first learned in your family. And, and, and a lot of you have had to unlearn and relearn things uh, later in life because you learned in a dysfunctional way. And, and your happiness in life, your satisfaction, it's impacted to a large degree by how well you get along with other people. It takes honesty to make relationships work. It takes energy and hard work and forgiveness. The relationships don't just happen. And we learn about this from family, from the family we inherit, from the family we build, and from the family that we choose. And then character. Are you honest? Do you tell the kids when the phone rings, say, I'm not here? Hope not. Well, what are they learning from you? Do you talk poorly about other people in front of your family? Do you do that? What kind of language do you use when you're at home, when you're with friends, when you're angry? Do you say one thing and do another? People have like an amazing hypocrisy meter when it comes to other people. We're not nearly as good at applying it to ourselves, but, but we have really good meters when it comes to the people, to the other people in our lives. And when we fail in the area of character, it's like we are giving a roadmap to others uh, that leads to the same place. And the third important area where we learn from families in our values. We learn what's really important in life. And, and right or wrong, good or bad, we learn about the value of faith. We learn about the value of money. We learn about the value of relationships. We learn about the value of work, about the value of possessions. All of these things come from, uh, you know, even how we're going to value other people. That we learn to either tackle problems or to run away from them, to face life or to, or, or to flee from it. And we need to pass right values on, not only to our children, to the family they've inherited, but also within the family, okay, that, that we're building, our friends, our co-workers, and within the family that we choose. Building relationships and character, you know, that's, that, that's so important in all three of our families. As a part of the family of God, there's an essential need for you to influence others for good. You know, Hebrews chapter 5 says, by now, now he's, he's, this letter now is, is to a group who are established believers, and they didn't get saved yesterday. 
Okay, they've been walking this journey out. Now it was a radical change. It was a whole new and different life and a new way of, of, of looking at priorities and what matters. But, but they've been at it a while. And, and the writer of Hebrews said to them, by now you should all be teachers. See, a, a logical place of growing in your, in, in your Christian life, of growing in maturity, is coming to the place where you are going to be the influencer of others. The teacher of others. They're going to learn from you. They're going to see those things from you. And yet they weren't there. And he criticized them because they were not yet there. But it's so important to get there. It's amazing to me when I hear people say, um, I'm not going to impose my spiritual values on my kids. I'm going to let them make their own choices. Really? That's like saying... I'm going to let my, my kindergartner make his own decisions about whether or not to ride his bike in the street. I'm going to let my kids make their own decisions about using heroin. I mean, that's utterly ridiculous. It, when people say they aren't going to impose their spiritual values on their children, they're teaching their kids that God is just one more choice on the smorgasbord of life. No, no greater, no lesser. It's just one more. People, God's not an option for a person's life any more than an engine is an option for my truck. Okay? It doesn't work without it. God is the driving force of the universe. And he's also the saving force of the universe. And as Christian parents, we're going to be judged upon whether or not we transmitted God's values to our children and as those who have built a family that consists of friends and co-workers and others, we're going to be judged on whether or not we transmit those values to the other people that are in our lives and who we love. When I hear Christians talking about not wanting to make their unsaved friends or family members uncomfortable, you know, I don't want to share my faith, I don't want to make them uncomfortable, it makes me wonder, do, do you even care that Jesus said that apart from him they are lost in heaven for hell. And, and family is where people learn and if they're in your family if they're in your family of friends how are they going to learn the truth about their need to be rescued? About a loving God who died for them if you don't tell them? So we have those two benefits. Of family. A third benefit of family is that God created the family to bring us joy. You know, the word enjoy, like enjoy, to enjoy is like to infuse joy into someone. So when we say we enjoy something, what we're really saying is that, is that this thing has, has infused joy into me. And God intends for the family to be that kind of place. I, I used to have these monster water fights with my kids. You know, we played soccer and football, multiple ball in the yard. I used to spin roadies with the four-wheeler while they were on the, uh, a sled in the driveway, just screaming in circles. And there were more than one tumble and not a little blood, but they loved it, you know. And they, uh, you know, I was the one who taught them to climb higher in the trees and, and do all of these things, right, to take risks. And uh, I've been in a lot of homes that, frankly, they just need to lighten up. Some people forget to have fun, right? And in your families, the, the one you inherited, the one you're building, and the one that you have chosen, the people in those families are much more interested in your level of joy than they are in your level of income or education. Do you, do you realize that? They're much more interested in your level of joy than they are in your level of intelligence. It, you know, we, we want to be the one who infuses joy into the room. We, we want to be in that kind of family. Well, we need to be the ones who, who literally bring that to the family. And if you are conscious of this, if you just write those three little letters, joy, and tape it to the mirror where you get ready in the morning, Talk about a little note card inside your Bible so that when you open up and do your devotions in the morning, believe me, you will become better at infusing joy into other people from this simple reminder. 
from the simple reminder at the beginning of your day to be joyful, right? I hope that one of your life goals is that people would feel better after having spent time with you. You know, quite frankly, some of you have to be careful. I don't know if I'm talking to anyone in this room, but we all know someone who's one of those people who just sucks the life out of you. And if that's you, you need to be careful. You wonder why you can't make and keep a friend. It's because you're sucking the life out of everybody. It's not all about you. Okay? Get your focus off from you and start bring, being the one who will bring some joy into somebody's life. You think you're the only one in life who ever had a problem? Who ever had a struggle? Start caring about somebody else's and see how radically that transforms your own joy and your life and your family relationships in all three of these families. Okay, if that's you, I hope you make that change because God will bless you. And then final, the final and most significant benefit I want to talk about in family life is this, is that the family is the launch pad for serving others. If you really want a strong family, the one that has like unity of heart, then establish that practice of serving together. You know, give your time, give your energy, give your heart. Now, a family of people who serve together has staying power. You know, when small groups go down, you know, and, and spend a Saturday boxing up medical supplies for Doctors Without Borders, okay, that's got staying power. When you go down to Bean's Cafe or the downtown soup kitchen and spend a day, right, when you come in and help with our food bank, when you decide, hey, we're going to go over and we're going to serve together my family and children's ministry, we're going to work together. When you serve together, okay, it strengthens you. Right? It strengthens you. It brings that, that, that bond of love that only comes from shared experience. 1 Corinthians 16, 15. In the Living Bible, it says, Do you remember Stephanus and his family? They were the first to become Christians in Greece. And they are spending their lives helping and serving Christians everywhere. What, what a beautiful... Well, what a beautiful testimony, right? The Crossing family serves together. We have, we have families who open their homes for small groups, for Bible studies, who, who do teach Sunday school together. Many of you do that. We have people who serve in our prisons. We have, we have people who, who run the food bank, who, who teach our kids, who go on mission trips together. You know, all of these kinds of things, serving as a family of believers. And if you want to bless your children, if you want to bless your friends, if you want to bless your spouse, your small group, help them launch into ministry. Challenge them. Okay? When they're little, insist and model it for them. Galatians 6.10, remember, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those of the family of believers. Many, many years ago, a man named Joshua, who was an incredible servant, who became an incredible leader, he issued an important challenge that really is for all people for all time. In Joshua 24, 15, he said, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, if everything I've talked about this morning seems undesirable to you, he said, Then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This challenge applies to every one of us today. Joshua the warrior saying to a very large crowd of people, stop pretending. Stop playing games. Make a decision. If your faith is real, act like it. If not, then chase what, after whatever wind is blowing. But as for me and my faith, we're going to serve the Lord. And maybe, maybe this sounds good to you. Maybe it's something that you've been looking for, something that you need. Maybe you're one of those people who, you know, like uh, a person very dear to me. She'd been teaching Sunday school for over 20 years, but in a church that doesn't preach the gospel. And I said to her, I said, if you fell over dead today, would you go to heaven? This person teaching Sunday school, 21 years, said, I don't know, how does 
and you will never know. Maybe if I asked you if you if you died today, would you go to heaven? Maybe you'd respond and say, well, I, I, I don't know. How does anyone ever know? Well, you can know. Remember how we began? I will take God at his word. And the word of God says that we're all sinners. And that the wages of sin is death, meaning eternal death, punishment in a place of suffering called hell. And the wage of sin, that's what it is. But it says, but the gift of God, a gift. You know as well as I do that a gift must be received to have value in your life. The gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. If you want to know the right way to live, if you want to know the truth, if you want to find the meaning of life, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And the Bible says very clearly to all who received him, Jesus. To those who called on his name, Jesus saved me. He gave the right to become.